Proper Anchor Installation There are two common methods of anchorage based on the wind zone location. Vertical or uplift anchorage is used in wind zones 2 and 3 with strap from the anchor attaching straight up the wall of the home for maximum strength. The second being lateral or frame tie method used in most zone 1 setups. These straps are installed at an angle requiring the use of a stabilizer to be effective. The 45 degree or inline method is commonly thought to be the strongest of the frame tie installation methods. However, two conditions must be met to provide the holding power required. First, the anchor must be in line with the strap being installed and attached to the home. That is, the helix is directed away from the home and this usually requires that the anchor be installed before setting the home. The second condition is the use of an anchor longer than the soil test probe chart has indicated for this installation. When the anchor is set at a 45 degree angle, it loses part of the cone of influence used to hold the anchor. A common error in anchor installation is leaving the anchor head above the ground level. Tests have shown that the anchor will fail at less than 700 pounds of side load. When tension is applied, the rod simply bends over, causing the home to fall off the foundation. An anchor is never to be left in this position. Even with the anchor head installed flush with the ground, the anchor cannot provide adequate holding power. While the helix will do its job of holding the bottom of the anchor in place, the rod will knife through the soil or bend as tension is applied. Anchors require some form of stabilization to be effective. Using a stabilizer plate does not add to the holding power if the anchor is left above ground level. The rod has room to bend over the plate, allowing failure in the system. The proper way to install an anchor is with the stabilizer plate and the anchor head flush with the ground level. We will cover this in greater detail in a few minutes. While we are discussing ground anchors, it should be pointed out that the cross drive or rock anchors are not designed for hard soil or rocky conditions. These anchors are designed for use in solid rock. When used in hard or rocky soils, the rods will bend with less than 700 pounds of side load or 1,000 pounds of direct load, a far cry from the 4,725 pounds of holding power required. As discussed earlier, frame tie anchors must be stabilized to keep them from bending or knifing through the soil or installed in line with sufficient length to hold 4,725 pounds. The most common anchor stabilizer is the 12 inch steel stabilizer drive plate, but several other steel and plastic versions are also approved. A concrete collar measuring 12 by 12 by 18 can also be used to stabilize the anchor. The proper installation of an anchor starts with the setting of the anchor at a slight back angle from the home. The anchor is installed leaving 16 to 18 inches of the anchor exposed. The stabilizer plate is installed straight up and down, slightly in front of the anchor. The anchor is now installed the remainder of the way into the ground. Using the slotted bolts and strap, pre-tension the anchor until the anchor rod is flush with the stabilizer plate. Use only strapping that meets the ASTM specifications for stretch and breaking strength approved for manufacturer home installations. When using a frame tie, the hook or buckle must start on the upper inside corner of the I-beam. The strap is then brought around the frame and over the strap on top of the I-beam and down to the anchor. The strap should always come from the top of the frame to reduce flexing of the I-beam. To attach the strap to the anchor, pull the strap past the anchor head 12 to 15 inches and cut with snips. Insert the strap into the slot of the bolt until flush with the opposite side of the bolt. Using a 15 16 or 24 millimeter ratchet, wind the strap around the bolt a minimum of 4 to 5 turns to adequately tension the strap. Continue tightening until the anchor head is flush with the stabilizer plate. This gives the system the proper pretensioning required for holding power. A side load of 700 pounds on a home directs a vectored load of 1,000 pounds on the strap and anchor when installed at a 45 degree angle. As the angle increases, so does the force on the strap and the anchor. At 53 degrees, a 700 pound side load translates to over 1,100 pounds and when installed at 60 degrees, the direct load doubles. This increased vectored force is the reason we recommend that you stay at a 55 degree or less angle with the strap installation 
and when the angle exceeds 45 degrees, an additional frame strap must be attached to the opposite I-beam. In this animation, the wind applies side load pressure to the left side of the home. The anchor on the left, or windward side, does all the work and the strap on the right side of the home goes slack. When any of the installation guidelines are not followed, the home is put at risk of sliding off the foundation piers and causing severe damage to the home. When the anchor moves more than the three inches, the blocks will tilt and slide apart. Testing done at Tie Down Engineering shows there is tilting of blocks prior to sliding apart. Now we are ready for proper anchor installation. Using your torque reading for the soil, determine the proper anchor for your install. Drive the anchor two-thirds of the way into the ground at a slight back angle and install the stabilizer plate straight up and down approximately six inches in front of the anchor. Finish installing the anchor into the ground. The new standards require that when installing strap, it must be protected at sharp corners by use of radius clips or other means. You can use tie-down strap protector, or some installers cut a piece of strap and bend around the beam to protect the strap. Install the strap starting on the inside upper lip of the I-beam and rotate around the beam back over and the top and down to the anchor. Cut the strap 12 to 15 inches past the head of the anchor. Insert the strap in the bolt until flush and strap must not be more than one quarter inch through the bolt. Using a 15 16 or 24 millimeter socket, wind the strap around the bolt four to five turns to adequately tension the strap. A speed wrench can be used to hold the bolt in place and make this step much easier. Adjust plate depth so that the anchor head is snug over the top lip of the stabilizer plate. Continue tightening until the anchor head is flush with and pre-tensioned against the stabilizer plate. Another change in the standards is the longitudinal stabilization. All homes must now have some form of longitudinal anchorage. The most common form is a bracket and tie strap. Attach the bracket to the bottom of the I-beam with the plates bolt to the upper plate over the I-beam. The strap would be installed with one of the corner bolts coming out of the back towards the end of the home, thus giving lateral and longitudinal stabilization for your home. Remember to check with your state and local laws or codes before installing any anchor or foundation system.